At first, the jet doesn't look like it's moving. It seems to slide, a matte black wing without tail or engine pods, crossing the runway like a shadow that forgot the airplane it belonged to. The rare official clips always have the same effect. The B-2 spirit feels less like a machine and more like a rumor that learned to fly. The B-2 was built to do one thing unnervingly well, slip past the most sophisticated air defenses on Earth and quietly erase targets that matter. Deep penetration, minimal warning, non-negotiable precision. The design, low observable composites, special coatings, a flying wing plan form, turns not being seen into a performance metric, not a hope, which raises the question that separates the B-2 community from the rest of aviation. How do you train to fly something that's designed to be invisible? Exclusive is an overused word. Here it applies. B-2 pilots are selected from a very small pool, often with heavy jet or bomber experience, and always with a temperament for marathon missions and nuclear surety standards. It's not just a flight check, it's a lifestyle audit under the Personnel Reliability Program. Initial Qualification Training, or IQT, at Whiteman AFB reads like a graduate program. Approximately 6 months, 266 hours of academics, 30 exams, 46 simulator events, and a first set of actual B-2 sorties only after the crew has already lived in the sim. If you train for visibility, you rehearse patterns, radios, formations. If you train for invisibility, you rehearse discipline. Signature management becomes second nature. How you turn, when you open doors, what you transmit or don't, where you place the aircraft relative to a threat's radar lobe. Bottom line, mastering a ghost is less about secret switches and more about attitude. Humility before the plan, intolerance for slop, and the quiet pride of people who do decisive work in the least dramatic way possible. If you ever catch one crossing a sunrise, resist the urge to reach for your phone. Just watch.